invincible under the sun. This single phrase drives Miyamoto Musashi in the manga Vagabond for a large part of the story. Just in case you've been living under a rock, Vagabond is a story about the samurai Miyamoto Musashi and his journey to becoming the strongest. The meaning of strength is recontextualized and redefined throughout the whole story as he becomes more enlightened by his duels and the people he meets. I love the trope of having true strength akin to something like Thor's and Vinland Saga. It makes these warriors feel a lot more interesting as they realize pure strength doesn't mean you're just inherently strong. What makes these wise men interesting is knowing their whole journey and seeing how they weren't always as emotionally intelligent. While this video is going to cover Vagabond spoilers, I'd still recommend watching if you're curious about what themes are covered in the story. But if you'd like to be spoiler free, read the 327 chapters that are out and come back. So in the beginning of the story, Musashi's real name was Shinmin Takazo. I'll get into the name change in a bit, but for now we're going to call him Takazo. He was a super violent young man who was frequently called a demon child. His father was a renowned samurai and his only parental figure. He was abusive and cruel to Takazo, and he separated him from his mother. This shaped him in many ways, and its impact can be seen throughout the story. Takazo is extremely interested in fighting strong opponents and essentially making a name for himself. He tries to mask his violence with the phrase, If you're gonna kill me, I'll kill you. Him and his friend Matahachi end up entering a war and get into various fights. We see him impressively go against countless people and come out victorious. Me and Takazo has already reached a state of being extremely strong. This is until we meet Takawan Soho, a traveling monk. The conversations between Takawan and Takazo build the foundation of the story for me. You might be big, but your heart is small. It's the size of a cat's. Who the hell are you? Why would a beast need to know my name? I'll kill you, even if you are a monk. Are you frightened? You'd cut me down if I were to even touch you. You keep your nerves on edge and you're always ready to lash out. You distance yourself from everyone. It's because you're afraid of people. You are the weakest person in this village. This is Takazo's first doubt of what it means to be strong. This seed blooms into a fear that plagues him and further fuels his desire to be the strongest. While he might have thought it before, this leads him to question his whole existence in life. Why was I born? For what purpose? He goes on to insinuate he doesn't even care. We're led to Takawan and Takazo reuniting. However, at this point in the story, they captured Takazo after he was wanted. He wakes up and realizes he's hanging from a tree. He's tied up and can't leave. This forces Takazo to have moments of self-reflection. He wanted to see his mother, but most importantly, he wished to become invincible under the sun, so he'd never have to depend on anyone. While he's on this tree, Takawan reminds him that he doesn't deserve an honorable death. Throughout all of his battles, Takazo has killed so many people who had ambitions, family, and friends, and they weren't granted the privilege, so why should he deserve it? These images begin to haunt him. Takawan mocks him and says if he wants him to kill him, he should admit he's fulfilled with his life. Takazo just breaks down again with a thought, why was I even born? Takawan frees him from his execution and tells him he has a second chance to start over. He says the life of rage and murder is not one for him. Takazo becomes reborn with a new name and becomes Miyamoto Musashi, thanks to Takawan's kindness. This message will be a lot more relevant later, but now his transformation has made him a lot more calm, more precise, and a more focused person. Now Takazo is Musashi for future reference. Musashi's still clinging on to becoming invincible under the sun. He now wants to challenge skilled swordsmen to have duels. It is a more grounded path for his goal to become the strongest, rather than recklessly killing anyone in his way without any reason or remorse. Despite Musashi's talk with Takawan, he's still not perfect in his words of, There is no light for those who do not know darkness. Live on and endure the shadows, Takazo, and brightness shall come your way. This quote's a great lesson in life that while wise people may end up giving you advice, we as humans tend to fully learn by experiencing things ourselves. In this case, Musashi's also been skeptical of Takawan's teachings. However, Musashi has fundamentally changed quite a bit from his younger self at this point in time. The confrontation with Yagyu is another important step to Musashi's goal of ultimate strength. In his presence, he realizes he's far beyond his element. He cowers in fear despite him just laying there with no weapon. 
He understands that this man knows the concept of what it means to be invincible. Upon asking him, he simply tells him, it's merely a word. This sends Musashi into a deep haze of confusion. How could one of the strongest people he's encountered so far just say his whole goal was merely a word and nothing more? In his conversation, he explains that if goals seem obscure, Musashi should close his eyes and see how infinite he really is. Throughout the story, he fights many duels and seeks to improve himself. He challenges the Yoshiaka school and is quickly stopped, which makes him reflect on his weakness. He ends up defeating these threats later on. The two Yoshiaka brothers are killed after their duels with Musashi. He has fought countless battles and gained so much experience in fighting. After their leader is killed, the Yoshiaka school decide they must ambush Musashi and kill him for winning the duel. Once he learns this is going to happen, we see something interesting. Musashi begins to pray. He says he's thankful that both the brothers could have killed him at a certain point in time, but instead, he was allowed to live and had a year to prepare for this. While we've seen Musashi grow a lot, this is a truly great retrospective moment where he appreciates the duels and experience he's gained, acknowledges how his strength has grown. Against all odds, Musashi was able to cut down all of the 70 men who attacked him. We see Musashi's growth all collectively reflecting his ability during this fight. After this, he's become what he's wanted, right? Invincible under the sun? Invincible. It's just a word. Musashi has had every piece of the puzzle explained to him by wise people he's met on his journey. And his words, you can only perceive true strength when you become strong yourself, finally click for him. Now that he's become the perception of Invincible, he says it's merely a mirage. My favorite moment in all of Vagabond is a stretch of chapters where he talks to Takawan in the jail cell. He was arrested for the murders at the Yoshiaka school and is feeling tremendous remorse. We see this reflected by his doubt of the idea of winning. Takawan's story as a monk and Musashi's as a samurai end up paralleling each other in so many ways. He explains to Musashi that even as a monk he makes mistakes, feels guilt, and even questions his own existence. This is something we hear Musashi's thoughts on a lot during the beginning of the story. So he's particularly struck when Takuan says it. He now mentions he heard a voice recently. He explains their paths are intertwined and how they've been completely decided by the heavens. Essentially he's saying that everything that will happen has already been decided. So in that sense, you're truly free. They're infinite. Musashi's original thought of strength was obscure and closed-minded. It was based off a vague desire rather than a true purpose. He couldn't comprehend what real strength is. By being connected to the heavens and becoming infinite, Musashi has actually come to experience true strength. He has reached his enlightenment thanks to everything and everyone he's encountered. At times, even my own sword surprises me. It is so fast and powerful at times like that. When my sword is feeling just right, the inside of my body it feels like it's shining. It makes me feel like praying. That light. That's what you meant when you referred to the heavens in your heart? I'm connected to the heavens. I think I finally understand. I see now. The firmer you grasp the sword, it's free and infinite.